Hello everyone, and today we are going to be taking a closer look at diving in Animal Crossing New Horizons. At some point in the game, Isabel will announce that the waters have been deemed safe to swim in, and now you can go diving. To get diving right away, I would recommend heading straight over to the cabinet in Nook's Cranny where they will have a striped diving suit. The color of the suit changes every single day, so if you don't like the color that you're given that first day, you are thankfully not stuck with it. There are also two other styles of wetsuits in the game, the first of which is in the Nook Stop, where you can buy a black and green wetsuit with the Nook, Nook logo on it for Nook Miles. You can also buy the matching scuba mask, but it, that is not required for diving, and it just looks really cool. Like anything that you order in-game, you'll have to wait until the next day for it to show up in your mailbox, so the fastest way to get in the water on that day, unless you time travel, is to go buy that striped wetsuit, and if you have the extra bills, it's not that expensive, so... You don't need to worry about buying so many wetsuits and just having a million and being useless. The other diving suit, which is my personal favorite, is available in Nook Shopping, which has a leaf print in various colors. This one also changes colors daily and can be purchased for bells like the one in the cabinet. This one's personally my favorite, and I love this one. This is one I typically wear unless I can't find it. Then I have to buy another one. Once you have purchased your wetsuit, it is time to head into the water. There are three different ways to enter the water. The first is walking up to the shore and hitting the A button as you are walking and you'll head straight on in. The next way is jumping off the dock, the airport, or a cliff in cannonball style. This can be very fun and you can even make a splash once you hit the water. I personally love cliff diving because I will sometimes randomly jump off a cliff without warning just to confuse my friends. If you are walking around your island with your wetsuit on around a cliff, I would recommend taking it off though because sometimes you can misclick and it can be very annoying to swim all the way back. I have done this more times than I would like to admit. The third way to get into the water is a running start, then flip into the water. This looks so cool and is honestly my favorite way to enter the water. This can be a little tricky at first. So you have to run towards the water while holding B, and then press A right before you stop while still holding the B button on your controller. It can take a few tries, but it is awesome once you get it. If you have trouble into the water, be sure that you are not holding anything because if you are, it won't let you get in. The wetsuit can be a bit annoying as you cannot add it to a wand outfit, and you cannot go into the dressing room at Able Sisters with it on or change clothes in your wardrobe with it on. I personally forget this so often and it is very annoying. I wish this feature was changed just a little bit. Now that you are in the water, to stroke, just hit the A button and steer like you would normally with walking. Every time you hit the A button, it makes you go forward, and if you hold it, it will make it so you are continuously going forward in case your thumb gets tired. Just like the fish and bugs, different sea creatures are available at different times of the year. This makes it so it takes a few months to catch all the sea creatures. There are three different sea creature sizes, small, medium, and large, just like the fish shapes. If you are after a certain creature, I'd recommend looking up what size they are so that way you do not waste your time on sizes that you don't need. Almost all the sea creatures move, and some are very quick, so I'm going to quickly show you how to catch these quick little creatures. So, I believe I have found one of the big quick creatures. These guys are tricky to find, so I'm not chasing him yet just because I don't want to accidentally catch him and have to look for another 20 minutes to find one. So, these guys, they are large, so if you can see there's a lot of bubbles coming up so that gave me a hint that this is a large creature these creatures are slightly faster than you are so it is pretty hard to catch them so I'm not really chasing him right now because what you want to do is you chase them to a fence line so as you can see this guy's already at a fence line so we're gonna dive down and we're gonna head him straight towards there so yeah he didn't have anywhere to go okay he wasn't a super fast one but you get the idea he isn't super fast, and as you can see, he had to come towards me. He could have gone up or down, but he came towards me. And you just don't know. They're pretty unpredictable with that. But if we swim down here, we go to a corner. They're trapped. They only have two directions to go. So it is much easier to catch larger sea creatures and drive them into the corner. Let's see if we can show you with this guy. This one's decently sized, but... So I'm driving him over here. Come on. This one's not too fast, so... It's kind of hard to show you, but... He's in the corner. He wouldn't have very many places to go, so that way it's easier. 
So if he's the sea creature, they can't go to the fence, and they're not just going to sit here. They're either going to head straight towards you, and you're just going to catch them, or they're going to go up or to the side. So it's a little bit easier, and you there's less space to swim, so that way you can catch them much quicker and easier. So I hope this helps with catching the larger creatures. And if you guys have questions about catching them, I can help you guys out in the comments because this is tricky. Even when you get them in the corner, you don't always catch them the first time or the first five times. But the nice thing is they don't despawn like the fish or the bugs. So if you mess up, oh well, you just got to get them into another corner and try again. So that is the nice thing. And that goes for all the sea creatures, which I personally really like because then I'm not like, oh no, I'm going to lose this like with the fish and you just get stressed out. While you are diving, you may come across a scallop. Once a day when you catch a scallop, there's a chance that past scallop will appear. Sometimes it takes a few scallops, but eventually you will see him. If you choose to give him the scallop, he will either give you a mermaid set DIY, mermaid set clothing, or a pearl, which isn't needed in all of his DIYs. It can take a while to cut the full set because he likes to give pearls a lot, much more than he gives the mermaid set. So I personally still do not have every item because I don't go diving every day for the past since it's come out. You can also catch pearls in the ocean, but they are very hard to find. So that does make it nice that P Pascal gives it to you. But at the same time, give me the DIYs. Pearls are, are very small, non-moving shadows. So if you're only pearl hunting, don't waste your time with anything large or moving quickly. I personally have found that diving is one of the more profitable activities in the game. It is so much re more relaxing to me than fishing is too. So personally, this is my one of my favorite ways to make money. And it's also pretty consistent with how many bells you bring in compared to fishing or catching bugs, which you can either get a ton of money or bring in almost nothing because all you have are sea bass. Sadly, there is no diving tournament in the game. And... There are also no NPCs willing to pay you double for sea creatures. I wish they would have changed this, but that's okay because you do make a good amount of money anyways. Like with all other creatures, you can display the diving creatures. Some of the containers are very creative for the sea creatures, and some don't even have containers like the snapping turtle. Some of the crabs are like this, so now you can have pet crabs around your island. I personally love this, and I have a pet horseshoe crab named Winford. He is amazing. I also love how when you catch seaweed, you can lay it out on the ground so it can make your beachless look more realistic, realistic or can add an extra level of detail to your dock areas like I've done with my little Japanese dock area. At first, the mantis shrimp seems like a normal sea creature, but if you interact with his tank, you'll be in for a bit of a surprise. The mantis shrimp will actually crash his tank. Don't worry, though, he can't escape. Yet. I personally love diving so much, so I hope this guide helps you guys enjoy it too. If you have any questions regarding diving or any other aspects of Animal Crossing, leave it in the comments below as it helps me to know what guide I should make next. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!